the big question is, with lockdown easing, will we be ready to fly? My name is Tim Palmer, I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of this farm strip in East Anglia. Bit of a bump or two, but only to be expected really today. I didn't really think we were going to get much of a chance earlier on. Well, very early on it was really nice, then it turned pretty horrible. Uh, John did some work on his brakes. I'd like to say I helped him, but I, I didn't really, apart from finding the odd bits and pieces of equipment he needed. OK, enough of that. I just wanted to test out the new intro. What do you think? This video should come out on Friday the 26th of March. That's one day before the clocks go forward and three days before we get the OK to fly solo or in a bubble again. The forecast is reasonable at the moment with sunny intervals and a moderate breeze. Since then I have attended Simon Keeling's weather webinar and he's now predicting strong blustery winds from the southeast with the possibility of a lot of turbulence. But will we be ready? To answer that we need to turn around and go back into land. Most of you will have seen the Nayland approach if you've followed the channel for any length of time. But well, we turn final over a building site. Well, it used to be the greenhouses and will in the future be a new estate. Once established, the site picture can be rather daunting. So this is, uh, this is a strange uh, approach <laughs> for me. Yes. Normally I wouldn't be aiming at a hill. <laughs> One of the problems has been the height of the trees, which tends to keep you high and makes it difficult for some of the faster machines. If you look at Martin landing his Jodel, you'll see what I mean. He's fairly close to the top of the trees as he comes over the hedge, but it's still enough to mean that it's quite a long way up the hill before he touches down. Not a problem on a still day or with a headwind, but very, very different if we're having to land in a very strong tailwind, which we seem to be doing quite often these days. This is John landing in his van's RV4. I know it was taken some time ago, but compare the trees and the hedge back to this photograph of me landing our old Nord and look at the difference. Well, I can't really see because I've got a reflection on the screen of the camera um, and I've only got my phone with me but I've come over in order to help 
Bill cut down the top of the trees. We've been complaining for some time about the fact that these trees have started growing like mad. So what we're here to do is see whether or not we can take them down a little bit. So this is what it's looking like from the lane. As you can see, they're quite hefty little bits and pieces. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to spoil your day, but the lorry's, the lorry's coming back down again. We had to keep loading up the truck and taking the bits and pieces away from the bottom of the hedge to a different part of the farm. I'd like to record a very big thank you to Bill for all the work he did and also to Colin for having a conversation with the neighbour and getting permission to cut the hedge down in the first place. I kept filming in order to give everybody a slightly different view of the airstrip. It really is a beautiful location. Well, starting from the lane there, you can see there is no more top to that. Uh, looking at the bits and pieces that were cut off, it was about between three or four meters came off there. And then there was that taken off. So we have from the holly tree, wrong way, from the holly tree through the, all the way back there is now clear. Is absolutely excellent. So now we've got an after. We had a sort of before, but we've now got an after as you can see. That fence or that hedge has gone way down, which will make life so much easier. And if I whip around, you'll see. This is all very good and will make it much easier, but it's the runway which is the main cause for concern. These badger scrapings are a real pain and they're territory marking dung pits. Having dug out these conical holes, it seems that they then poo into them. The trouble is that they are now a protected species, so there's little we can do apart from repeatedly filling them in. But if anyone out there has got any ideas, any permissible ideas, then please let us know. The other thing we need to address is to flatten some of the world's largest molehills. These now cover the lower section of the runway and are too big to just roll flat. And anyway, the ground here is too wet to take the tractor, as I know to my cost. So we'll have to move them by hand and use the soil to fill in some of the rabbit holes. I have to say, I have never known the bottom of the strip to be as boggy as it is now, and that part of the runway is definitely unusable at the moment. Bearing in mind the stay at home order, I haven't been over as much as I would have liked, but on Tuesday we did start on some runway work. With this repair work done, and if the weather is kind to us in the meantime, as long as we only use the dry part of the strip, some of us might be able to fly. 
The airfield will need a close inspection on the day, and I think I might leave the spats off for a while, but apart from that, the aircraft is ready to go. It just leaves me to charge up and check all of the equipment in my flight bag. I've got two separate six-way chargers. The black one charges the GoPro cameras and the remote, and the white one the rest of the equipment. And by pressing record, all four cameras will start recording. And then if I want to have a rest from filming, then I simply press that. The cameras are still on. They're waiting for the next signal, but they're not actually recording. So, yep, they're all ready to go. And uh, as I have said to a couple of people, I'll show you what happens with my um, flight bag. But to make sure I've got everything I need then everything's got its place this is camera tubes the one that's upside down and faces forward it is the uh, 4 it's got the extension battery on the back to give it a little bit more life because if you remember I did actually say that all of these Hero 3's their battery life seems to be much better than the 4 but this is camera 1, it's on the front front panel and shoots backwards and then I've got 3 now as far as 3 is concerned I have to charge it off outside of the case but it goes back inside the case and clips in place and that's the one that I've got as an underwing camera. And this one here, which sometimes I call three, don't I? But this is the fourth camera. Um, and that's the one that I've had in the back shooting forwards. I haven't, and you, this was the one that I didn't actually have set up with the Wi Fi. But this is the, the newish Hero 4, and that tends to just sit in that little compartment there so I have to remember to put the remote in this remote is still on so I need to turn that one off I have to be very careful I find with the batteries on that one because the number of times I've gone to use it I need to find that it's out of battery which is really disappointing and impossible to get the underwing camera going uh, as well as that, inside the bag, I've got uh, weighing scales, which doubles up as a torch and um, a power brick for the phone and other bits and pieces. I have shown that in a previous video, and that's the video um, when I was talking about the weight and balance schedule. But they sit in there like that, um, bearing in mind... Um, the future situation this is the snood so that if I do need to have a mask it's it's there I've got a pair of black gloves that they sit there as well and these boxes these are the ear plugs for the um, headset that sits in there this one here is, is just spare batteries so I've got batteries in there and you will have seen from the still that I've got a number of power bricks so I've got this one which is the anchor, um, this is the one that powers the um, pilot aware. I'm reaching across the top there because the other thing I've now got that sits in that same pouch, this is the little tiny unit which is the amplifier because I wasn't hearing the warning messages from pilot aware. That one works quite nicely. Um, I do all of my sound recording on this Sony um, and it's just a matter of making sure that I've got the AAA batteries ready for that and that sits in here as I say everything's got its place and the only other thing I've got which you probably saw in those first photographs is the fact that I have got here 
my trusted old iPad and there we are that's it it's uh, ready to go